So what you what you said that really like caused his demeanor to change was the fact that you said that he was a beautiful man that you wanted to be closer to you. Hmm. Do do so if I look at I I don't have like a Bible on hand, but would I know any reason why any like particular line? from the Bible that might set that off? Uh, just give me a general intellect check. Alrighty. Unless you have expertise Bible. Oh. <laughs> oh, expertise Bible. <laughs> um, so, kind of, <laughs> kind of thinking it over, there's a lot of demons in the Bible. Um, you think... Maybe there was some references on, like, the succubi and incubi, demons that feed off of sex. That's maybe something that, like, all of this could connect to you, but it's a very, very loose idea that you have. Hmm. Interesting. So what was the, was the, was this dude implying basically I should leave now? Is that what he was saying? It was more of a. Whenever he left, he said he had to go tell the Moki that it won't. And then whenever he came back, he mentioned, um. Just kind of like go ahead. It wasn't a. Like go ahead and leave. It was a go ahead and do what it is you want to do. Ha <laughs> ha I do have mission. Alright. In that case, suit off. Up to the Marquis room I go. Alright. Uh you go up the stairs. And on the upper balcony there is a security guard by the master bedroom. He again standing there. He seems Spanish in nature, and he's holding a cross in his hand that's from a pendant. And just very silently whispering a prayer to the Mother Mary. And as you enter the bedroom... Let me find my thing for it. Hmm. I'm concerned. Where this is going seems a bit much. As the door opens, at first a strong blinding light can be seen. Give me a fortitude save. Oh Christ. I swear to god, the marquee is like a demon that I got Oh of course roll a nine. You are like completely blinded at first. It takes you like you put your hand up in front of your face. Um it takes about a minute for the blinding light to fade enough to where you can see. And as your eyes adjust, you notice that everything within the room is extremely plainly white. The floors have a soft tinted reflection of everything around it. Light dances around the room so heavily that a single light source gives way to absolutely no shadows in it. There is just a uniform, plain whiteness. And sitting in a chair by a desk is the Moki. So, I've been told that it works. Tell me, did the Lady of Color send you? The, the what? Huh. He just very softly sighs. Samaki, so, I'm I'm not sure what you're referring to. I don't know who this um, lady is. Actually, who did so give me the contract? The was it a woman? Uh, the contract was given by the. Let me 
go through my note real quick. It was the Council of Ministers from France. It's there wasn't a particular one that raised it. Um, actually, give me an investigation on that. Because you might have a little bit more insight than that. So, you did do a little bit of digging. It was given by a man that... He very much wants his son to be the new Marquis of this region. But it was a man. So, if that's the case, then follow me. And also with your investigation check, you can tell that there was a hidden room right here. Makes sense with the floor plan. Alright, I'll follow behind him. Um, can I try to roll an insight to see if, uh, if I know if he has any kind of ill tensions or if he's just being weird uh give me an insight and i do want to say as you meet him um at first like the front of him looks completely fine but as he gets up to lead you you realize that the entire back of him is covered in peacock feathers okay uh he plans to take you to another room and stab you a lot he has a knife hidden on his backside <laughs> Uh, you can tell that whatever this lady of color is, you're assuming that uh, he's expecting that he, um, she sent you here to be killed by him. It, does the Marquis still appear human? Looking him over, yes. Okay, so as he's... So I can tell that, so as he's walking into the secret room, He's not I'm going to the be... secret room. He is actually taking you back out into the balcony. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I'm still like kind of standing behind him, though. Yeah. Um, uh, so the exit. security guard that was outside has completely left since you uh, came, went in there. All and right. It seems so like he's gonna... trying to lead you to the guest bedroom. All right. Um. Not gonna let that happen. So what I'm gonna do, I'm standing behind him as he kind of like exits into the balcony. I'm going to quickly turn the suit on and try to hit him with the taser gloves. Um, it's alternate resistance dodge, but does he really get a dodge check if it's I'm gonna from say surprise that, like this? Um, because he doesn't have any kind of extraordinary sense for that. You just kind of hit him. Alright, then uh, DC is 42 to 15. Hold on, I have it set up. As you grab him, there's that shock, and he instantly falls to the ground. Passed out. As I rolled a nat 1. Oh wait, is it limited to the second degree? Uh, yes, but stunned is still like he's... Uh, I was actually pulling up the conditions just for this. I'm, he was sick to then look I'm gonna at say it. for this that, like, the electricity courses through his body, and he just kind of falls to the ground, like, twitching a little bit. He's still awake, and you have, like, roughly five minutes before he's in well enough condition to fight or scream. All right. Well, since the Marquis attempted to murder me, um, I will. I'll, I'll quickly change back before he can actually see the suit, and then I'll. I'll drag him back into the master bedroom, shut the door. Uh, is there anything around I can I could tie him up with? Uh, there's the bed sheets. Yeah. So take the bed sheets and kind of like tie him. I'll, I'll tie him tight so he can't wiggle out. All right. Give me a sleight of hands. Uh, damn. Oh. Okay, he is tight. <laughs> like, 
You just kind of like, do you rip the sheets or do you just kind of like take them as is? I, I, I'll rip them and I'll rip yeah, them properly. Yeah, you rip and... them, Pote. You tie his legs, arms, hands, feet. Uh, you have him gagged. You have him blindfolded. You tie him to the chair he was sitting in. Uh, you tie that chair to the desk. You kind of like go a little bit further with it than later <laughs> on you may be happy to admit. And, um, Svox so kind of like stare down at him. I'll get the knife off him. I assume I can kind of pull it yeah. off. Do you, um, do you mind explaining what this was for, Marquis? As I said, you gagged. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it's more a rhetorical question. I don't know who this uh, lady in the red is, but um, I can assure you, I'm going to be telling some folks about. Ah, uh, see, that's a sure. Secure. I'm going to slide some gloves on, so my fucking fingerprints ain't everywhere, and I'll uh, I'll rifle through his desk to see if I can find any information. Right, as you rifle through the desk, uh, you do find like, several letters. At first, they seem to be in a strange language to you, but... Wait, actually, are you able to read different languages? No, that's probably gonna be the next power I take, because that could seem real fucking... But at the moment, no. So, looking them over... There's just strange scribbles. Um, there was definitely a pattern to them. You can tell that it's a language. But... It's not any language that you might be familiar with. Well... Um... Well, the Marquis can't see me, so standing behind his back. He seemed to have a wardrobe or something. Uh, looking around... Oddly enough, no. Alright. This bug I have, is it only something that can be put on, like, like, clothing? Um, that's like the preferred thing. Uh, let me check the notes on this real quick. Uh, it can't... It's preferred that you put it on clothing, but it can be, like, attached to skin. Like, it's kind of something that, like, they might feel a little prick if you uh, stick it to them, but, like, it's not something too noticeable. But, obviously, if you did it to somebody that's, like, tied up like this, and you prick them, they're probably gonna ch check it out afterwards. What if he's unconscious? Then probably not. Alright, so... I'll... I'll get up behind him and kind of say to his ear, Well, Marquis, this was a fun evening, but, um... I don't think we'll be taking these positions, thank you. I'll slip my arm around his neck and kind of like, try to choke him out. Alright. Um... You put your arm around. You begin to choke him out. Between the gag, there's not much noise. Um, and he just kind of, like, after a minute, just, like, falls kind of in a lifeless slump, but you can still, after you let go, you can hear the breathing. Completely knocked out. Alright. And as you knock him out... You notice the piano playing gets louder. Okay, is it something I'm going to have to deal with later? I'll attach the bug in a you know place. It's not too noticeable. Wait, uh, you and, uh, just like on his back. You just kind of like put it in on his low right side. Just kind uh, of towards uh, the middle. And time to get to that secret room. Alright, uh, going over to it. It seems like it's a plain wall. Um, give me an investigation to find the triggering mechanism for it. 
Damn, these rolls are are not doing me any favors tonight. It takes you about ten minutes, and in that time you start to hear the Marquis behind you stir a little bit. Not quite awake, but getting there. Um, and eventually you find underneath the bed there is a button. You hit the button and the wall softly clicks. And that's it for the moment. That's the right, only I'll thing that you found. Move over and push it open. I assume it can open it. Um, as you go to push it, you realize that the wall, instead of just pushing out into the open, slides off to the side. Like 30 feet of wall moving. It is... Does it look like it could naturally fit there? Or no. Uh, yeah, it's like that's just naturally how long the wall is. Oh, okay. And right, as you so slide what... it open, what it opens move? up to a strange sensation. On one side, pure blackness. On the other, pure whiteness. Above you, the ceiling has them slowly merge into thousands of very minute shades of grey, very cleanly fading into one another. The same is said for the floor. On the far end of the room, there is a single plain canvas. A palette as well as a few colors are attached to the bottom of it. In that palette, is there any red or thing like that? Or... Uh, there is... Well... It actually has all of the colors. Huh. So... Does... Does it actually just look like paint? Does it look like blood or any, anything not normal? It seems like normal paint. Lady of Colors. All right, I'll I'll write this all down. A little notepad. Oh fuck! This is getting this is getting some wacky shit. Um, I'm going to while I'm up here, or I'll remote vision down to the room the harp music was coming from. See what the hell's going on in there. All right. Or, um, the harp. So as you listen to. The piano, you close your eyes, you focus your mind, penetrating through the ground below you. And there you see it. The piano music playing, but a piano not being played. Instead, a girl of about 17 in age, a long haired Chinese in origin plays the pan flute, but as she plays each note, instead of the sound of a flute, it is that of a piano. Ha. Huh. Well, I'm certainly going to take note of that. Uh, does she have any distinguishing features, or does she seem to pretty plain? Uh, looking over, she does have the very long hair that runs halfway through her, through her back. Um, her eyes... Like, as you kind of move it a little bit, as she opens them a little bit to... After a little... I just keep saying a little bit. Sorry. Um, she... Opens her eyes to change out instruments. And they are very, very fine blue. And those eyes... Like, there was just an innocence behind them. Like, uh, as you, even you, somebody that's had all of these missions, you've killed in your past, you've done some things that would be unspeakable to most. And, like, as you look into them, all of that just kind of fades away for but a moment before you remember yourself. Hmm. 
Yeah, definitely mark that down. Uh, can I roll an insight to see if she's if she seems distressed or if she just seems kind of at peace with what she's doing? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Alrighty. Twenty one. There is a definite peace about her, but there's also a slowly growing boredom. The like, every once in a while she switches between instruments, but the piano sound seems to stay the same. It's not until she picks up a violin that it changes from a piano to a full-on orchestra. And as she does this, she smiles for a little bit. And then, like, flinches and slowly puts down the violin. Well, this is outside my pay grade. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Dante is going to take very strict note of that and kind of he'll watch her for a bit, just like writing down various information. Right. He'll kind of tuck his little notepad you, away and. After a bit, she does stop playing, and she heads down the hall into the main library. Alright. Oh, well, I actually better... Let's see. Uh, th this library? The small one here? Uh... Yes. Alright. So, walk. I'll walk out of the secret room and kind of shut the door. Is the marquee awake? Uh, the marquee is fully awake, yes. Alright. So... Uh... Take care mm. of yourself. Take care of yourself, Marquis, and um, be careful. You wouldn't want this um, lady in red to, oh, lady of colors, to be disappointed now, would you? No, wait, fuck, no, that doesn't make any sense. What am I talking about? Ignore that. Mm. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. oh, the gloved hand will kind of like pat the Marquis's head kind of a rough way and then just um, step his way out on, onto the balcony and look around is there anyone anyone around um nobody in the bedroom as you come out to the balcony nobody out there the goat is still missing all right I'll down the steps and get to the garage And if I'm not, like, stopped on the way to the garage, I'll just kind of 